the thrill of go. The gold rush in Victoria, a state in Australia, began in 1851 and lasted until the end of the 1860s. During this period, Victoria was the place to be, as worldwide the amount of gold found here was greater than anywhere else. The gold rush was similar to the rush in California. Within the first year, in excess of 370,000 fortune hunters arrived in Melbourne and Sydney. Many gold mining towns were established in a hurry close to the mine, which is covered in this movie. The Poseidon Gold Rush started in 1906. 3,000 miners came and many very large gold nuggets were found. We now focus the coverage on an actual working mine in this region, the Big Hope Gold Mine. Here we see the core hub of the mine, the plant. They are in the process of replacing a water pipe. During the drive through the mine, in the middle of the image, you can see light coloured gravel, which has been laid out so it can be searched for gold with the detector. Robin just arrives with another load of pay dirt. This is the southern side of the extraction zone. All water reservoirs in the mine are currently completely full. And here we have arrived in the northern extraction zone. From here we can see the four freshwater dams towards the back of the mine, where the extraction zone is. We can also see the fields where the extraction has been completed. The miners Gary and Brad are following a lead that is an old and dry creek bed which contains gold. It is 450 million years old and through erosion of the landscape has been covered up. Superimposed, you can see the direction of the lead. Gary is digging up a thick layer of clay with topsoil. This material is not worth using any further. In the freshly cleared zone, worthless material is already being deposited again. Due to safety considerations, the edges are being broken. Gary is waiting with a shovel to load pay dirt into the truck.
Any deeper material is loose deposits of weathered clay mixed with sandstone and slate down to the bedrock, consisting of sandstone and slate. This soil mixture deep into the rocks is excellent and is being transported to be detected. Robin the driver is able to use all mining machines and in addition is also the site mechanic. Here we can see the detection field from the top. In the foreground, we can see the storage area with the workshop container, and in the background, we can see the gold wash operation zone. Bread gives instructions on how to unload the material in the detection field. The pay dirt is now being spread out for the next detection layer. and then the whole thing is being flattened so it can be more easily detected. Using the detector, larger gold nuggets are being located and marked, and Ethan, a new worker, is assisting in digging them out. If someone here in the gold fields is swinging a magnet 20 centimeters above the ground, it will be full of iron stones. In an area with so much mineralization, Australian detectors are the most suitable.
ますイエイ Many iron stones, like they are contained in this material, do sometimes contain gold particles. Selected pieces like this particular one will be crushed with the small rock crusher and added to the washing process. Brett is now moving around the open pit about 5 metres down where the massive bedrock has been scraped. He picks up things which may still be of value. The lowest 70 centimetres of the removed material contains 70% of the extracted gold. Exactly here on the sidewall, Brad has discovered something. Only a little piece. Here, the mining zone is being enlarged, and consequently, a eucalyptus tree had to be removed. Gary moves the top layer of soil out of the way with the bulldozer. Red removes the material with the front loader. Back here appears to be something going on.
a lot of soil is being moved around the open pit zone. This is to enable Gary to work with the excavator deep down to enable him to reach the bedrock. On the left side of the open pit, the bedrock is now 7 metres deep. Here, in the deepest part, they have found some massive gold nuggets up to 139 grams. Further to the left, the rock gradient is less steep and there is no more gold. On the right hand side, the incline is steeper. In this area, some gold was found. One piece was still 25 grams. In the back, near the dam, the bedrock is only 3 metres deep. This lead most likely will continue to the left of the dam. Naturally, on this mine, nothing can be done without diesel. As an example, this machine consumes 25 litres an hour. All machines are used to move the topsoil. Again, down in the extraction zone. First thing I can get you to do, Robin, just make a base here so when it falls down we can get it. <laughs> 
Yeah. I was thinking of dropping a couple of boulders down. One just dig that section out there, Rob. Yep. There's another one in there. Doing it, not me. Here, Rob. Here we can see how hard the clay and rock mixture is, but despite this, the machines can easily dig it up. No, you could grab this in the fucking bucket, Gary. Dig it out, yeah. Keep back moving the cap backwards, Link. There we go, you got it. Yep. on the foot there. I had the opportunity to dig up some gold nuggets myself. <laughs> That's good. Happy? Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Now the already searched dirt is being moved to the wash plant.
Under the dirt vibrator begins the wet process. In the drum, the clay mixture is being thoroughly washed. What falls through the holes is the good wash. The pump in the foreground moves the good wash high up to the jig. The Pan American jig is a concentrator. The rubber cuffs assist in an up and down movement of the water within the system. From the top it looks like this. A hand width under the water level is a fine steel mesh, which allows the up and down movement as well as the flow of water simultaneously. The lighter material will raise to the top and flows away with the water stream. The larger and heavier pieces of gold will stay in the fine steel mesh, whereas fine gold pieces will fall through the mesh and move to the next process. The yellow machine is the spinner. The fine material which moves from the jig over the grey tube on the top moves into the spinner. There are grooves in the bowl as well as water jets. Light material works itself over the grooves to the top and floats over the rim away. The more heavier gold stays in the grooves through centrifugal force. Slightly right, we can see another dirt vibrator. It continues to move the clumpy dirt from the jig for the new process. Here we can see the mud from the jig and from the spinner moving into the slurry pit. Robin brings the unprocessed dry and clumpy dirt directly to the washing process. To achieve the optimum accuracy, all material will go through the washing process twice. This container contains the diesel generator for the plant. Here we can see the pumps which transport the water from the Loddon River to the mine around one kilometers distance. This old pump moves the water to the plant. Now it is time for the daily clean out. All the gold nuggets remain in the first groove, together with the lead balls, which are part of the jig system. Be on your side of the Gary. <laughs> That's Put maybe ten, ten, ten grams more. Uh, more. Seven, eight grams of the car. Yeah. 
The largest segment is mostly inside the spinner. Here is a handful of the concentrate. Here is a view of it in the pan. These both made fucking glasses. Yeah. Actually, I reckon it's not too bad, guys. Here is an even better handful. And another even better one. Now I have the privilege to show you something special. This is one of the biggest gold nuggets found in this mine. 2.5 kilograms. This large quartz piece contains 1.5 kilograms of gold and its source is the Poseidon lead, which is close by. The largest nugget from that lead was 29.6 kilograms. I greatly enjoyed the experience of being part of a working mine and being able to document this. I would like to thank again the mining team for this wonderful opportunity. Do not miss any of my videos. To subscribe, click now.